Good day to you all, my wonderful children. How are you all doing? Hope you're keeping safe, how are your parents? And hope you have been enjoying all the lessons we've been teaching for the past one month. All right, don't you forget that the CBT test is still online and it's gonna to end tomorrow. I believe by now you should all be done with all the six tests. There is nothing to worry about, don't be scared. There are simple questions that you can do. So it's a must. I mean, having listened to all the videos that has been taught and having assessed all the notes that has been uploaded, it is very important for you to do the CBT test. Another one is coming up um, shortly and it's going to be 20 questions. So prepare for that as well. All these are done so to prepare you for the forthcoming examination so that you won't be caught unawares. All right, today, we shall be treating the subject English language and the topic we're looking at is intensifiers. The topic we're treating today is intensifiers. But before we go on, like our usual practice, I would like to let you know those things you're expected to know at the end of today's class. So first of all, let's go to, I told you the subject is English language and the week is fourth week, and the class is primary six. So let's go to our learning objectives, those things you're expected to know at the end of this lesson. Learning objectives. At the end of this lesson, each of the pupils should be able to define intensifiers and should be able to use the appropriate intensifier in a sentence. Now, if I may ask you, what are intensifiers, okay? Intensifier are words or adverbial phrases that are used to show emphasis in a sentence. So let's take a ride. Take a ride with me as we go into the lesson in details. All right. So I said the question earlier that I asked was, what are intensifiers? According to my definition here, I said intensifiers are adverbs or adverbial phrases that strengthen the meaning of other expressions and show emphasis. There are words that are used to show emphasis. Examples of such words are extremely, really, very, too, absolutely. So let me take you into the next slide so that we see some examples of these words. Words that are commonly used as intensifiers include completely, extremely, highly, rather, really, so, to totally, utterly, very, and at all. Now let's go to some sentences and see how these intensifiers are used in a sentence. All right. So let's look at the examples. Example number one says, she was so upset. She was so upset. I felt extremely sorry for her. You can see now the word so emphasize how that person, that individual was upset or the degree of our annoyance. So the word so um, tells us how or uh, the level of that person's anger. So she was so upset, I felt extremely sorry for her. So the word so and extremely emphasize the anger or the state of mind of that person at that particular point in time. Let's look at number two. B, she has a very strict teacher. She has a very strict teacher. Very is the intensifier in that sentence, emphasizing the character of the teacher of this particular individual, that the teacher is very strict. So very is the intensifier in this sentence. Now you see, don't work too hard. Don't work too hard. Sometimes you'll get more done by relaxing a bit. Don't work too hard. The intensifier in that sentence is too. Now, if you take out the word too from this sentence, what you're gonna have is don't work hard. And that is not really emphasizing, it would not really emphasize the contest in which this person 
he's trying to portray how well this individual works or needs to work or does not need to work. All right? So to there, emphasize that this person often works hard and therefore he needs to reduce or cut down on his hard work because he wants too much. So the word to there intensify or emphasizes how hard this person works. I hope you understand that. All right, let's continue in this. Now, there are some adjectives. Before we go there, let me quickly let you into this one before we go to those strong adjectives that we often use the wrong intensifier for. We're, we're going to get there in a bit. So now, on earth and ever, on earth and ever are uh, used as intensifiers with WH words. WH words are words like why, who, where, what. You see, those are WH words. So intensifier such as on earth and ever are used with WH words. Now let's see examples. For instance, example A, what on earth is he doing here? You can see, what on earth is she doing here? The word on earth is our intensifier and it was used with WH word what. I just said that earlier on. I gave you examples of some WH words. Now let's look at number two. Why did I ever invite them to stay with us? Why did I ever invite them to stay with us? Yes, our intensifier here is ever. Ever is our intensifier. And it was used with the WH word, why? Why did I ever invite them to stay with us? Now, you can also form example of your own. For instance, I can say, why on earth did you do that to her? What has she done to you? That's why on earth did you do that to her? So, or I can say that wherever you go, I don't care. Wherever, where are WH word and ever are intensifier. Wherever you go, I don't care. However you do it, it is not my business. It is none of my business. However you, I mean, get the job done, is none of my business. Mine is to get the job done. So in the sentences I have made now, however, how being a WH word and ever being an intensifier. So however you want to get the job done, I don't care. Mine is get the job done. So we use um, intensifier ever and on earth with WH words. I hope you understand that. Okay. So whenever you see the word on earth or ever used, you definitely know, look out for the WH word in that sentence. So let's go to, I was trying to say something at the uh, initial um, slide before this one, that there are some words that are wrongly used with strong adjectives. Now, here is it. I said intensifiers with strong adjectives. Intensifier with strong adjectives. There are some strong adjectives that do not need any intensifier. It has been emphasized enough. They are self-explanatory. Therefore, do not require any intensifier. Do not require any stress or emphasis being used in that sentence or with those words. Now, I'll give you an example of such strong adjectives. There are words like very big, very big. Very big means enormous. Or, okay, if you remember our synonyms, words with the same meaning, okay? This are synonyms, right? So we have very big. Another meaning, if you don't want to use very big, is enormous. Enormous means very big or huge. It is either enormous or huge. It means very big. So it is wrong of you, or it would be wrong for you to use the word enormous and huge with very again. So it is wrong to say very enormous. That is tautology. Topology means repetition of the same word in a sentence. So why use the same meaning in a sentence? 
words with the same meaning in a sentence. So it's wrong. So it is wrong to say very enormous or very huge. Very enormous or very huge is wrong. It is rather enormous or huge. Let's go to number two. You have the word very small. Very small means tiny, little, all right? Little or tiny. So it is wrong for you to say very tiny or very little. It is either tiny or little because tiny or little means very small. So saying very tiny again, you are, I mean, laying much emphasis on that sentence and it does not, I mean, it is not required because tiny already means very small. Is that okay? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, can I get you to say yes, I do? Okay, so I can move on. Right, so another one is very clever. Very clever means brilliant. Brilliant. All right, so it is wrong for you to say that boy is very brilliant. You see, because very clever already means brilliant. So using very with brilliant is an error. So rather you should say the boy is extremely brilliant, not the boy is very brilliant. That is wrong. Extremely brilliant. All right? So that is the word. So like I used to tell you in class, it is very necessary that you speak right. And you often tell me that, oh, what of my mommy, what of my daddy, they, they speak wrongly. And therefore, when I try to correct them, they tell me like, oh, where were you giving birth to? My friend, we've been speaking English before when you were born. Yes, that is their own age. But right now, we are in the jet age. And a whole lot of sentences, a whole lot of English expressions are spoken wrongly. So English evolves on a daily basis. So therefore, you must be up to date with the world, know what is going um, on around you. Listen, use the internet, listen to radio, watch, I mean, read novels, read storybooks, read newspapers. You will see the use of words, okay? And follow people who you know you can learn from, who speak well, all right? Who you can learn from. So this is very important. So these things, you should take them into practice. Like I said, you can stand out and be the only different person in your house who speak correctly using the necessary articulation in your English expression. All right, so learn to speak impeccably is very important. So another word is very bad. Now, very bad means awful or terrible or disgusting or dreadful. Something that is very bad is either awful or terrible or disgusting or dreadful. Now, it is wrong for you to use the word very with awful or terrible or disgusting or dreadful. For instance, saying, oh, that, that movie is very awful. No. Because awful means very bad. There is no need for you to use or intensify the word awful with very. Are you beginning my point? So please take these things into um, practice and make sure you use them correctly in your day-to-day -day speaking of English. Another word is very sure, very sure. Now, if you're very sure of a thing, that means you're certain. There's 100% certainty that that thing you're talking about is real, is authentic, is genuine. It's not fake. I hope you understand me. So using the word very certain. Uh -uh, okay, I give you an instance. I give you an instance. When is the football match going to be played? When is the football match going to be played? It is very wrong for you to use the word very certain. It's wrong. Oh, when is the football match going to be played today? Uh, it's going to be played at six o'clock. How sure are you? Uh, I'm very certain. We often say these things. I'm very certain about it. I'm, I'm very certain. You don't need to use very with that word certain. You rather should say how, okay, if the question is asked, how sure are you about that 
information you just told me. I'm certain. I'm certain about it. Simple. Or I'm very sure about it. That's all. You don't need to use the word very with certain. It's wrong. Okay? So that is how these are strong adjectives. Very sure means certain. So if you must use the word certain, you shouldn't use very with it. I hope that is clear. So another word is very good. Very good means something that is wonderful or splendid. Wonderful or splendid are the words. Now, it is very wrong to use the word very wonderful. How are you feeling today? Oh, I feel very wonderful. That is bombshell. That's what I call it, bombshell. All right? So it's wrong. It's not very wonderful. It is rather, how do you feel today? I feel wonderful. That should be your response. Because wonderful already means very good. So asking the question, uh, if you have been asked the question, how are you today? I feel very good. And if you don't use the word, I feel very good, you should say, I feel wonderful. Not, I feel very wonderful. Or the word splendid. How are you feeling today? Like it's raining here. It's raining across Lagos, as I'm teaching you right now. And someone asks you the question, oh, how are you feeling in this cold? I'm not feeling cold. I feel very splendid. That is bombshell. It is wrong. You say, I feel splendid. All right? Because splendid means very good. Is that okay? So let's go to the last one. Another word is very tasty. Very tasty means delicious. If it's not delicious, you also say sumptuous. All right? Sumptuous. Something that is very tasty is the either delicious or sumptuous. Ah, I love my mommy's dishes. I love my mommy's food. Why? Because our food tastes delicious. Our food tastes sumptuous. Oh, you missed the party yesterday. The delicacies there were so sumptuous, were so delicious. Ah, I wish you were there. You missed out. It is wrong to say, ah, I wish you were there. You missed out. The delicacies were very delicious. My friend, you just committed a blunder. It is not very delicious. And we often hear, we often hear in adverts, you hear something like, ah, very delicious, very delicious. Boom, 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 boom. It's wrong. So that is why I said, get a mentor. Listen to people who help to improve your speaking of English. Don't listen to jargons. Most of the adverts that I've done are not helpful. They either use pidgin English or even some of these are so-called actors in movie industry. And some of them, some of them make a lot of blunders that you listen. I'm like, oh, this person just, and they are big stars. It doesn't make, the fact that they are big stars doesn't make what they say correct. So you have to stand your ground, listen more, read more to know the new way of uh, expression, the better, the, the, we have books on 250 um, wrong English or wrong words that are wrongly used. So you can get books like that and read on them. So learn to use the recent improved accepted um, use of English words. Okay? So it's wrong to say very delicious, very delicious, boom, sha, sha, mimi. It's wrong. Okay? There's not like very delicious. It's either very tasty, delicious, or sumptuous. Okay. Right? Let's move on to the next thing. And that one is now I have all in the net the previous slide, I have sound that notes. Look out for those strong adjectives that do not require intensifier. You don't need to emphasize on them. They are better used the way they are, okay? Without intensifier. So I have all, I'm sounding a note here. I said, we do not use very with strong adjectives. I just said that. Do not use very with strong adjectives. For example, we do not say something like very enormous. I have said that. We do not say something like very brilliant. I have said that. With strong adjectives, what we use is intensifiers like absolutely, exceptionally, really, quite, totally, utterly. That boy, instead of saying that boy is very brilliant, is wrong. Say 
that boy is exceptionally brilliant. That boy is exceptionally brilliant. Oh, I'll show that the football match, or I'll show that the match, if there's a match that is supposed to be played today, and someone was trying to ask you, let's assume it's a match between Chelsea and Barcelona, Chelsea and Barcelona, and someone was saying, oh, who do you think is going to win tonight's match? Is it Chelsea? Is it Barcelona? And you're like, Chelsea is going to win. And the person further asks you, how sure are you? I am absolutely certain about this. If you want to use the word certain, you don't say, I am very certain about it. You can say, I am absolutely certain about it. You get it? So that is, these are the words you can use with strong adjectives. Absolutely, exceptionally, really, quite, totally, or utterly. Or you can say, I am totally certain. I am totally certain. Or I am absolutely certain. Is that clear? Or I am quite certain about it. All right. So any of these would go um, with strong adjectives. All right. Let's conclude this class. Having said all of that, it is very important. There is a program on TV. I think it's on TVC. I'm not advertising for them because they didn't pay me for adverts. And if I'm supposed to be doing adverts for TVC, I should get like a million bucks in my account. Or I'm only saying so that you know those educative programs that you should watch or look out for on TV. Stop watching African magic. I am emphasizing it. They speak, yes, is our mother tongue. But if you want to speak right, listen and watch movies that will improve your standard of speaking. There are a lot of you, you are used to it in your house. It's African magic from morning till midnight. Please do not. Do not, it's not helping you, okay? So look out for educative programs where they talk about diction, how you pronounce words. There is one, speak right. I don't know if they still do it, but there are several of those programs that you can watch. It will help you. You speak correctly. It pains me, it breaks my heart. Sometimes when I listen to kids who go to private schools who are supposed to be different from kids who go to public school, I'm not trying to discriminate here, but I'm only saying, the reason why it's called a private school is because oh, it is believed that better education or um, better teaching is delivered in private school. So it breaks my heart when I, you know, see kids who go to private school and yet still speak like just a regular kid on the streets. And I come and go, and he not come and come, he not come and hit my head, or he not come and knock me. He choke me. Those things are wrong. There's nothing like choke. He spoke, and there's nothing like knock, eat. So these are common errors we make on a daily basis. Please, I beg you, speak right wherever, anywhere, everywhere you go, with your family members, with your friends, at church, everywhere, he stands you up. So this is my pattern shots to you. Examples, the film was absolutely awful. You can see that. Ah. Have you watched Dracula? Eh? That film is so scary. All right? The film was absolutely awful when I saw it. Not the film was very awful. No. The film was absolutely awful when I saw it. So I have told you that words that can be used with strong adjectives are absolutely. So let's look at number two. He was exceptionally brilliant child. He was an exceptionally brilliant child. He was the word uh, um, approved or accepted um, intensifier to be used with the word brilliant is exceptionally. So he was an exceptionally brilliant child, just like many of you. Yes, you, you looking at me. Yes, you know yourself that you are exceptionally brilliant. Yes, every one of you watching me right now, uh, I don't want to start calling names. I know you, you are exceptionally brilliant. So I pray that the Lord will continue to keep you, guide you, give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And please, if God does his part, you should also do your part. By what? Reading. Like I told you, I gave you an instance. There is a difference between faith and work. Faith is you have done your work and you believe that your work that you have done, God is going to bless it 
and make it result into success. But foolishness is leaving work out, you do not do any work. And you have faith that, ah, you put your book right in front of you and you were praying, God, put this book in my head. No, it doesn't work. All I'm trying to say is, please, I beg you, try to study as much as you can. Because the sooner this whole pandemic is over, the better for all of us. Because what is going to happen is all the examination, excellent examinations that you are putting for will be coming up. We will start writing them one after the other. And you don't want to be caught unawares. So my parting shot to you is, I beg you with the love of God, try to study and go online, assess the notes. I have told you, if there's anything you don't understand, you can send a message directly to me via my Gmail. And that option is in your page. So if there's anything you don't understand, hit me up with, on my um, Google uh, mail and I will answer your question. And please do assess the online test. It's for your own good. And look out for the next one coming up next month. And please tell your parents to make sure that data is made available for you to access all the videos and online um, notes. Till I come your way again on this same platform, I remain Mr. Ogularo. Bye for now. Regards to your parents. And please keep safe by always washing your hands, others running water. And if you must go out, running water and soap and apply alcohol based sanitizer. And if you must go out with your parents, make sure that you wear a nose mask. I miss you all. Bye for now. Adios.